Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about viruses. All the shapes and sizes. <laughs> viruses. So, are they dead or are they alive? Let's check it out. Living things consist of seven characteristics of life. Made of cells, metabolism, respond to environmental stimuli, grow and develop, contain DNA or RNA, reproduce and maintain homeostasis. Hmm. Let's see how viruses add up. First off, they do have a capsule that goes around their genetic material, so that would count as a cell. Okay. Next, they evolve, mutate, and change, so they respond to environmental stimuli. Yes, they contain DNA or RNA. That's the ger their genetic material. Now, reproduction. Hmm, reproduce. It's sort of iffy. They can't do it on their own. They must actually be inside of a host and use the host machinery to make more of them. So they can't do it on their own, but they get the job done. So, eh. Next, maintain homeostasis. We see that capsule again, and it does keep the insides away from the outside. So again, that's sort of an eh. So... Well, we got four out of seven. Some scientists say yes, some scientists say no. This is still actually a big debate, big debate right now. It depends on how many characteristics you use, depends on what definition of life you use. So you will need to make up your mind and make a judgment and be able to back your judgment with evidence. That would be a really, really good essay question. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah. Okay, viral structure. Start with the pieces. The viron, or the viron, either way, is the complete infectious particle. It's the whole package. Next, we have the capsid. Capsid is the protein coat that encloses the genome, the DNA or RNA. That protein coat helps recognize host cells. Okay, the capsomere are the little particles that make up the capsid. The nucleic acid, genetic material, the DNA or the RNA, makes sense. Now, nucleocapsid, exactly what it sounds like. The combination of the genetic material plus the capsid. Together, nucleocapsid. There we go. Some have an envelope. Not all, but some have an envelope, which is a protein membrane that encloses the nucleocapsid. It is protein and glycoprotein. Now let's look at, take a look at some shapes. First we have the helical virus, which again has the capsid surrounding the nucleic acids or the genome. And we have the capsomere, which are each individual piece that makes up the capsid. Okay? Helical. Next we have the polyhedral, which means many sides of virus. Polyhedral, again we have the whole capsid, made up of the capsomeres, and we've got the nucleic acids inside. Makes sense. Next, we have the enveloped virus. We've got the nucleocapsid inside, which is our capsid with our nucleic acid inside, made up of the capsomeres, and then we've got an envelope around it. Finally, we have our complex viruses, or our bacteriophages. We have the capsid as the head, we have the DNA inside, we've got a sheath, we've got the plate with some pins, and we've got the tail fibers. Now, the base pins and tail fibers help it actually land on the cell, then it actually squeezes its DNA into the cell. Okay, we'll learn more about that when we talk about reproduction. This is going to be your hated most part. You need to draw these. Now, not in detail. You do not have to draw every single one of these capsomeres. You do not do that. I want shape and where the DNA is located, or the RNA, the genome. So give me the outline of this guy, and then do some squiggles inside and like about the nucleic acids. Give me some roundness, show me, you know, the helix, and show me where the DNA is. Again, with this guy, the outside shape. 
Then we've got the capsid, and then we've got the nucleus, uh, the nucleic acids inside. Again, do not draw me in detail. You can, but you don't have to. Same with the bacteria phase. Should be the capsid, should be a sheath, should be a base plate, and some legs coming off of it. Looks like a lunar lander. Look at these in more detail. Helical virus, bigger picture. It is a long rod shape. The rod can be flexible or it can be rigid. It's got the viral genome in a hollow cylindrical capsid. And we've got two examples. This is the rabies virus over here. And you all know about the Ebola virus, how it moves and loops. So the Ebola virus is an example of it being flexible. And the rabies virus here is an example of it being rigid. Polyhedral, just many side. So most of the time we see an icosahedron, which is 20 sides with triangle faces. We have examples of an adrenovirus. We have our HIV up here with the many sides. And we also have our poliovirus. Next we have our envelope virus. It's roughly spherical, not always, maybe more two versus sphere. But there's two types. We can have an enveloped helical virus or an enveloped polyhedral virus. Basically, we took the other two and we put an envelope around them. So we've got the influenza that's over here. Again, we see our envelope around our helical capsid. And here we got an enveloped polyhedral. We've got our herpes simplex virus surrounded by the envelope. Yay! Complex viruses, bacteria, they just one's my favorite. The capsid is a polyhedral. Then we have the tail sheath is a helical type thing. We've got our tail fibers and we've got our plate and pin. So again we see this guy here and he is actually literally gotten onto a cell and he's injecting his DNA into the cell. So he doesn't even need to go into the cell. He just injects his DNA. Or RNA. <laughs> we'll talk about that more later. So sizes. They're measured in nanometers, 10 to the negative ninth. Please make a chart of each of these telling me their name and sizes. So example, D4 bacteriophage, 225 nanometers. Adenovirus, 90 nanometers. You get the idea. Now guys, take a look over here at the human blood cell. It is 10,000 nanometers versus, you know, all these tiny, 30 nanometers. These viruses are teeny tiny, but they can do so much damage. So, I'd like to thank Montgomery College for helping me with some of the content from this PowerPoint. And we have our virus reunion. Bah! We were nano before it was cool to be nano. Have a good night.